Descript is an AI powered editing tool. And when it comes to editing any type of audio or any type of video, it might be the easiest tool out there because you will just drop in your audio or video clip, it will turn it into text and you just edit the text. But it's a lot more powerful than just that. They have a ton of different AI tools built into something called Underlord that I'm gonna show you. And in the last few years of using it, it saved me a ton of time. So in this video, I wanna show you everything that you need to know to use Descript to its full potential. We'll start with the very beginning of using some of these AI tools to get started with editing our project. And I'll show you all kinds of different things to take Descript to its full potential. And this video is brought to you by Skill Deep AI, but more on that later. Okay, first, before we jump in, make sure you have the latest version of Descript installed on your computer. You could get it from their website. I'll link it in the description. You wanna download it for your Mac or for your PC. Now, when you first launch Descript, you're gonna land on this page. So this is gonna land you on your drive page. And this is gonna show you all your recent projects. Yours is gonna be empty right now if this is your first time. So right on top, you could create folders for organization or you could press a new project right on top. So before I do that, I wanna show you one more setting. If you click your little logo right here, you could change everything to dark theme. I think by default it's set to light theme, but if you wanna get this kind of dark look, make sure you go ahead and change it here. Okay, so that brings us to step one, which is creating a new project. So I'm gonna click this right over here. And we have four different to choose from and they add new things all the time. This is one of those apps that releases new useful options very frequently. So you may see some things that I'm not covering here, but the core functions that I'm gonna show you is gonna be pretty much what I've been using except some of the new AI tools that I'll cover are a bit new. So video project is what I'm gonna choose, but you could just work with audio files. You could do a quick recording, which is gonna give access to the camera and you could remotely record too. I'm gonna choose video. Now this is the page where we're gonna spend all our time usually inside of Descript. And what we first wanna do is we wanna upload a file. So your video or audio file, depending on which one you chose in the last page, will get dropped over here. And then I'll walk you through some of these options over here. Underlord, this is an entire library of different AI tools that are just fantastic. I'll show you that in a little bit as well. Right now, let's drop a video file over here. And I have it on my hard drive. I already recorded this one, so I'm gonna drop it into this box right here. Now, this is gonna take a few seconds. It's gonna analyze your file. And what's really cool about this step is instead of adding it to traditional video editing apps, it's gonna go ahead and transcribe it into text. So let me give it a second and I'll show you what it does. Okay, so that was a 23 minute video clip of me recording another tutorial that I dropped into here. And what you see now is the preview of that video here in the middle. And on the left side, it created an entire transcript for me. Now, what's useful about Descript that a lot of different apps are just not capable of doing is now all I need to do in order to edit this video is I just need to edit the text that shows up over here. So let me show you some options over here. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and name this. So this is just a chat GPT tutorial that I'm creating. Okay, let's get started with some basic editing. And by the way, down here, there's something called a timeline. If you've ever used any editing app, traditional editing apps work on a timeline. This also lets you use a timeline. So all these different tools are available to make cuts and things like that based on these timeline editing. I'll show you that in a second. But right now I wanna use the text to make edits. So I could tell right here where I said, okay, let's go ahead. And I think I repeated myself this entire time where I decided to just go ahead and recreate the beginning or re-record the beginning. And you can see the timeline is making some adjustments. So as I highlighted this part of the text is highlighted this part of my timeline. Now, right here, I'm just gonna press Command and the minus sign on my keyboard. If you're on a PC, press Control and minus to kind of shrink down your timeline if you just wanna see a bigger overview of it. And you don't have to actually look at the timeline at all. I'm just kind of showing you if you're coming from a different editing app, this is basically what you would do. You would select the portion, delete it. This is doing that with text. Now, as I select something, I always get a new menu. I'm gonna cover this in the very next step, but right now, all I wanna do is just press delete on my keyboard and it deleted that whole section, it's gone. It's gone from the video and it's gone from my transcript over here. So that's extremely useful. It makes editing way, way faster. Sometimes you wanna select a portion and you wanna do something else. You wanna go ahead and correct the transcript. This is useful if you need to download this transcript later, which typically for my YouTube videos, after I'm done with this, I do correct this or before I start editing. So then I could take that transcript file and put it inside of YouTube. 
even though YouTube does that automatically, it doesn't do a great job, right? This is gonna do a great job because you're going to manually fix any issues. And by default, it does a really good job. So I barely have to fix anything. But if a specific word was wrong, so for example, let's say this one, I could go ahead and press correct on a specific word and type in something else. So in this case, I don't want this to say zero, I want it to say O, so that's what it should look like. And I could either correct this specific one or I could say correct all. It's gonna find six different versions of this one and I'm gonna say correct all and it's gonna add it to my entire script. It's gonna correct it in every version where it was exactly making the same mistake. That is a huge time saver. Okay, now let's go to the right panel because you can manually do some of these editings, but there's this underlord. This is an AI suite of tools. So if you click it, it's gonna let you do all kinds of different things. The one I like is right here, edit for clarity, cut to the chase, remove filler words, digressions, bladder, all the obvious cuts. This is just wild that you could do this these days. That would take you probably half the time you're editing, that's what you're doing. Now you could do it with one click. If you don't want it to take it to that extreme, this one's really useful. Remove filler words or remove retakes, shorten word gaps. So you do have multiple different things you could do. Just to show you what's gonna happen right here, this video right now, if I shrink it down, I believe I said it was about 22 minutes since I cut the beginning. So if I click edit for clarity, I'm gonna go ahead and send this out. Okay, here's a new script. It took out everything that is unnecessary and I could say apply edits to the script right over here. So let's try that, accept all deletions. And if you look down at my timeline, look at all these different cuts that got made and it cut a couple of minutes. And then you could use some of these other tools in combination. So I wanna make this a really quick edit. I don't want any pauses. I usually like to keep my edits really tight. So I could choose that and look at all these cuts that it can make right over here. So if I select any of these, you can see it looks like this whole section was not cut out for some reason with the other one. So I could go ahead and apply it right here. So shorten or shorten all. So I got this menu here. Let me just do all to see how much we got over here, how much time we got back. All right, I'm down all the way to 14 minutes now. So I started with something like a 24 minute clip and now with just those two AI tools under the Underlord tab, so I chose this one for clarity that didn't cut out all the pauses, so then I chose this one over here. So you could try those in combination, very useful. Now at this point you could keep editing manually if you want and remove anything else that it did not remove automatically, but you could see that it did cut out 10 minutes, so it's probably pretty close to being done. So usually what I do is I go down here and I play my video right here and it follows along with the video and the transcript. You can see that it's following word by word. And if there are any mistakes, I will probably select that mistake with the text, just delete it. But if you did wanna manually edit down here, what you could do is just down here, I could expand this portion just to show you how the edits down here work. Let's say I wanted to delete this little section right over here. So all I have to do is over here, this is the blade tool, it's the cut tool. I could go ahead and make a cut right over here where this line is, and then I could choose this arrow tool, select that portion right here and press delete. Obviously that's more traditional editing if that's your background, but I would typically prefer to just use the words over here, it makes it really easy. And I just had it on mute right now, but the audio will be playing along with your video. Now for the next step, let me show you how to add other type of media on top of your video. That's called B-roll, so sometimes you wanna hide some of those cuts. And on this left panel, there's a whole section called media, which gives you access to a whole library of stock videos or even these little graphics that you could add, stickers, you could choose them all from here. So if I go to the stock video library, I could search for different things. Let me choose a robot since I'm talking about AI here. Okay, this looks pretty cool. Let's select this one. It's gonna go ahead and load the media. And if you look down here, it's gonna add it to this top line. So it's gonna cover what I'm doing on the bottom line and I could just put it wherever I want. So I'm gonna put it over here. So now if I just press play, it's gonna be on this video. Let me go ahead and expand it. And then as soon as it goes over here, it's gonna cut to this video. And then I could go ahead and shrink this down. This is just traditional editing. And then when that little clip is done, let me go ahead and press play. 
it cuts back to me. So that's a great way to enhance your storytelling, make it more visually appealing. And also, if you don't like those cuts, because there's a bunch of different jump cuts that when you edit a video like this with one layer as a video, this way it hides those cuts. So a lot of times you wanna combine those to just make your video look more professional. Now, after I choose some of those, and they, by the way, they have stock images too. So there's a ton of different images you could use in the same way I just showed you as a video clip. Next, I typically like to add music. So the music tab, they do have a library of music that you could choose from. So if I show all, again, we could go and search for music. So let's say we want something epic. These are all the different music tracks that have the epic title. Again, I'm just having this on mute right now, but all you have to do is press the plus sign and it's gonna go ahead and load that media and add it to your timeline. So wherever this line was, this is where the audio is now getting added. And there's ton of audio editing options. You can see right here, I get a little audio, it means music kicks in right over here. But if I want it to be all the way in the beginning, I could simply just drag this over all the way down to the beginning of my timeline. So let me go to the beginning. There it is, and I'll put this right to the beginning of my video right over here. And this is a really long video, so I can't stretch this out. So if you have a really long video, you could go ahead and copy this. So I could just go ahead and right click on this and then copy it. And then I could go ahead and right click in this blank area and paste, and it's gonna duplicate it. I'll make sure they're back to back like this. And you could always go ahead at the end of any music and go ahead and shrink it down like this. It's editing just like video editing, but this time it's an audio file. And you also have this elements tab. And if you open the elements tab, it has all kinds of different things like dynamic text, waveforms. This one's really cool, like for audio podcast. Let me click on this one. This is gonna create something like this. So when it's playing, it's gonna use the audio to create a graphic like this. And these can be moved resized, they have all kinds of different styles and things like that. So obviously it would take me many, many hours to go through all the different options, but you could play around with some of these here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. Now, if you wanted to record something to add on top of what you're already editing, they do have a record option over here. So you could record audio only, you could record with a camera and you could record your screen and dump it into here. So you do have to give it permission with your computer. Screen recording is obviously one of my favorites. That's typically how I record my videos with the screen in the background and me just in the corner over here. So you could have that in combination and just record it and then put it in your timeline. It's gonna auto transcribe it, making it really easy to edit. So lots of different options on this left panel. Now, if you're doing any type of audio recording using that function or if you're doing any podcasting, obviously, Make sure you use a good quality mic. I have one that I really like. I'll put it in the description from Amazon and I've been using it for many, many years. Okay, let's go back to our AI underlord over here. So we looked at some of these, but one of them that I didn't show you is at this point, you may wanna improve the sound quality if you are not using a great mic or if you don't feel like you set up your mic correctly, you may be able to get away with it with the studio sound, which analyzes the audio and improves the audio it tries to give it studio quality using AI. So that option is really, really interesting and useful. And then outside of that, you have ton of different, more advanced AI tools. Eye contact just came out. This literally, if you're looking right, it changes it and makes you look at the camera. <laughs> very strange, but very cool. You could center the active speaker on camera automatically. You could even generate images using a prompt box over here, and it's gonna generate an image, all kinds of different tools. I'll probably make a dedicated video all about Underlord at some point, but this is really, really interesting. Now, if you wanna dive into AI, we have a platform called Skill Leap AI, and with Skill Leap AI, you get a membership to an entire course library covering the top AI tools. Now, at the time I'm recording this video, we have over 20 courses. We have a ton of different individual tutorials. This one's our most popular course, Ultimate Guide to AI, walks you through all the top AI tools, about 20 different tools that make you far more productive. And we also have AI-powered podcasting. It really dives deep into ChatGPT with beginner and advanced courses, so you could really learn how to repurpose content, how to write content, all kinds of different things you could do for your business. And with this, you also get access to our community, which is a private community where people could ask us questions. I keep you updated personally on all things AI. I'll put a link in the description and you can start with a free trial to see if it's a good fit for you. Back to the video. Now, let me show you one of the options that I believe only comes with the paid version, but this is extremely powerful. Let's say I already recorded my podcast or my video 
And I made a mistake. I said the wrong word over here. This formatting word should have been another word. I could select it. You get this menu here, press replace. You could record, obviously correct it. But the one I wanted to show you is this option, overdub, which with overdub, what it lets you do is it will read another word in your own voice. All you have to do is train Descript to know your voice, clone your voice. And then every time you wanna make a correction like this, it will literally use your voice to make that correction. Okay, and it's gonna sound just like you and you have to go through the training. This AI tool was here way before AI even took off. This is one of the first AI tools that I found useful many, many years ago. So I'm glad that it's now going mainstream and this tool has become pretty much the most powerful AI video app available right now. Okay, let me also show you captions right over here because a lot of us, when we're making social media videos, I'll show you how to change the size in a second too because you can make this square and vertical for different platforms. But these captions are really nice. You just click, it's gonna apply it to your layout and there it is. Because it already has the transcript, the caption is gonna follow along. Let me just go a little further, I'll press play. You can see the caption is following along with the script. So this is why it was important to fix the script or this transcript in the very beginning of the video. That way your caption is also very accurate because it's reading off this right here. And they have many different options that you could go ahead and choose. You stack them on top of each other. So let me delete the other one. And this is the one that I'm using right now. Now, what if you wanna change this and actually create another version for Instagram? So typically to do that, I'll click the home page right here. Everything is saved. This is gonna bring me over here. And I usually like to duplicate this project. So I'm always on my, my drive tab here. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the project. It's just gonna make another version of this one. And if you open that duplicate project, it's not gonna interfere with the other version of it. This one I was making for YouTube. All I have to do over here is change the size. So this is what it's gonna look like. And then all you have to do is select the video in the position tab, you could go ahead and fill the canvas. And if it's not center frame, just go ahead and center frame it. And it's gonna look great just like that. And if people are watching it, the subtitles look good, the video looks good. Now your projects this entire time is getting saved automatically, which is really nice. Typically traditional video editing apps, you have to make sure you save. If it crashes, you may lose your file. This is just getting saved in the background constantly. I don't have to worry about that. But if you are done with your project, you could do a couple of different things. You could go ahead and share it with other people. You would need to add people to your workspace. So they could do that up here. You could press the plus sign and add people. I have a couple of people in this project. That's one way. And then they could go ahead and comment on different things. Let's say you're doing this for a client. They could make comments if they have an account with you. Next, you could press publish over here and publishing has a bunch of different options. So right now I'm gonna to go to the export tab because this shows you all the different ways you could go ahead and export your projects out of here. The video option, well, usually when I'm done with a video project, I need the edited video. So you would go ahead and export that from here and it's gonna let you do it in all kinds of different resolutions if you wanna go ahead and change that. You could also do audio only. So if you just had an audio, you have a couple of different formats. So this is the uncompressed one. This is the MP3 that most people upload on the internet or on their podcast. You could also take the transcript and you could do it in Microsoft Word format or just plain text format. This is really useful. A lot of times I download this transcript and I use other tools like ChatGPT to help it turn that into a blog post or a video description for my YouTube videos. Then you have the subtitles, which I mentioned in the very beginning, but typically if you're going to YouTube, you wanna download the SRT file from here and upload it in the back end of your YouTube channel. So that way that has the corrected transcript and the corrected captions inside of your YouTube videos too, if you're not gonna put it on screen here. Thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you on the next one.